27 court there in your corner. A Tucum carry man on trial for allegedly killing his wife will now have to wait at least six months for his date with justice. We'll explain coming up on News at Noon. KFDA TV 10 Amarillo. Live from the Four State News Authority, Lisa Jones, Derek Laddick, meteorologist John Harris. This is KFDA News at Noon. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. A mistrial has been declared in the case of a Tucumcari man charged with killing his wife. Quay County District Attorney Randall Harris tells KFDA News that the first-degree murder trial of Alfred Baca was called off last night. Harris says a juror allegedly made contact with a witness that hadn't yet testified. Reportedly, the two discussed previous testimony in the trial. After finding out about this, the judge hearing the case declared a mistrial. Harris says the state will again try the case in six months. Meanwhile, the matter is being investigated by the Tucumcari Police Department. Baca is charged with the May 1991 shooting death of his wife, Geraldine. Her body was discovered on a remote Quay County road with her three-year-old daughter in her arms. The child was injured but survived. Another Tucumcari man, Sergio Flores, is also charged in the murder. Well, two people are set to be arraigned this afternoon in connection with a late-night drug bust on Amarillo's north side. According to police, the two were arrested around 11.30 last night at a northwest 14th Street apartment. A search warrant reportedly turned up about 16 grams of crack cocaine valued at over $3,000. One suspect was arrested on possession charges, the other on a parole violation out of Randall County. An early morning fire has destroyed a trailer house just north of Canyon. According to officials, the fire broke out at Pullman Acres around midnight. No one was hurt and damages estimated at $15,000. The cause of the fire is under investigation. Well, jury selection continues today in Los Angeles for the trial of four policemen charged with beating motorist Rodney King. It's a trial local residents are watching closely, hoping to see a different verdict. As jury selection got underway in Los Angeles for the federal trial of four police officers accused of beating Rodney King, here it was business as usual for cafe owner Melody Matthews. Like most, she doesn't agree with the not guilty verdict given in last year's civil trial. I don't think it was fair the way they did it. This time around, the four are charged with violating King's civil rights, and some leaders in Amarillo's black community predict a different outcome. With the trial being changed to Los Angeles and with the possibility of um, a different type of um, jurors uh, in a different location, uh, there there probably be other thoughts that will come into the case that had not appeared before, but again, it's hard to predict. Some feel if a guilty verdict isn't handed down, more violence could occur, not only in L.A., but in cities across the nation. There is still a problem. So, uh, you know, there are those who will feel that everything is fine, but uh, there's still a lot of racism. Folks like Melody plan to watch the federal trial closely, not only to see the outcome, but to use it to teach a lesson to the young. Well, I can help talk to young people and make, try to make them understand. It's not, you know... Sometimes they live. And with that attitude, Melody hopes to do her part to defuse a potentially explosive situation. At this hour in Washington, the Senate is wrestling with the family leave bill. The House passed the measure late last night with area congressmen Bill Sarpolis and Larry Combus both voting against it. As KFDA's Matt Worcester reports, local leaders are waiting to see what family leave will mean to the economy and job growth. The Amarillo Independent School District is the city's largest employer. Some 3,200 people get AISD paychecks. So for this Amarillo institution, the family leave bill is something to study. And while the AISD already has its own extended leave program, the family leave bill would mean changes in how AISD operates. Well, from an operation standpoint, we'll have difficulty filling in for people. We always do, or we do right now. So uh, we'll have to just work like the other businesses to try to, to shift those responsibilities to other employees and see if we can... Uh, make it through that particular leave period. While temporary help can be hired for work in the office, the AISD already has a pool of temps for the classroom, substitute teachers. However, having subs doesn't solve all the problems of a family leave bill, 
but it does help. It probably does from the classroom standpoint, but I'll tell you that we face trouble every year trying to find enough qualified folks to to work as substitutes and staff our schools. On the legislative level, one local lawmaker says family leave is a mistake. Larry Combest says we need less regulation, not more. I hope that all businesses could have a family leave program. I would hope that they could pay much more than minimum wage. But if they cannot afford to, the result is that they will take their cut in their business at the place where they are the most liable. And in this case, it would be people. So what you'll end up with are people out of work. But while some lawmakers say family leave is bad for business, President Clinton says he's signing the bill not to hurt business, but to help families. Matt Worcester, KFDA News at Noon. Still ahead on News at Noon, John Harris says we could see a few snow flurries later today, but by tomorrow it's back to sunshine. John will have our forecast right on into the weekend. And in state news, we'll look inside the courtroom at yesterday's testimony in the murder trial of Kenneth McDuff. Stay with us. In Houston today, day four of testimony is underway in the capital murder trial of convicted killer Kenneth McDuff. Yesterday, McDuff's own mother took the witness stand, part of a day packed with emotional testimony. Betty Cross is covering the trial and filed this report last night. One of the state's most notorious criminals walked into court today knowing his mother would be called to testify. Kenneth McDuff told reporters he didn't know how she'd hold up. Oh, she's in bad health. When 77-year-old Addie McDuff took the witness stand, she and her son barely made eye contact. She says this is the first time she's seen the paroled killer since February 29th. That's the night before his alleged crime spree. Her 46-year-old son is accused of robbing this Waco convenience store, then kidnapping and murdering Melissa Northrup, a mother of two. Her husband, Aaron Northrup, said his testimony today left him in emotional shock. It's not every day you, you, you go to court and be in the same room with your wife's murderer. Aaron's father said he blames the Board of Pardons and Paroles for his son's grief, saying the convicted killer should never have been set free to possibly strike again. I think they share in the responsibility. Whether they are ultimately responsible, I couldn't say that. But they, they certainly have to have a share in it. Despite their own heartache, today the Northrop said they feel compassion for Kenneth McDuff's family. But while they know this capital murder trial is hard on them, they say the McDuff suffering will never equal their own. In Houston, Betty Cross for CBS News, Southwest. A little bit closer to home, the junior ROTC program at Tascosa High School continues to be one of the top units in the nation. This morning, there was little wonder to as why Tascosa's Navy cadets were put through their paces during their annual inspection. Of course, the mission and the goal of the Junior ROTC program is to instill leadership and pride and professional uh, conduct among the kids, and it's kind of contagious. They get to be a family of kids who draw together and all work sort of towards a, you know, a one goal, and that is to be the best. Tascosa's 105 cadets are being judged on personal bearing and attire, marching and drill team performance. While not all of these young men and women will go on to careers of military service, their commanders say most will go on to lead lives tempered by self-confidence and self-discipline. Well, taking a look now at stories making headlines around the world today. In the Philippines, a volcano is threatening to blow its top. Thousands of people have been evacuated as officials expect the Mayon volcano to erupt at any time. A violent explosion earlier this week hurled ash and steam high into the air. It last erupted in 1984. In orbit over Europe today, a Russian space satellite unfurled a huge solar sail which reflected a beam of sunlight that parts of the Earth darkened by nightfall. Scientists hope that eventually the project could help in future rescue efforts or extend daylight hours. In this country, Major League Baseball has slapped a stiff penalty on Cincinnati Reds owner Marge Schott. Officials announced last night that she'll be suspended for one year, barred from day-to-day -day operations and decision-making, and fined $25,000. She's accused and has admitted to making racial slurs about players. And finally, folks in the African nation of Benin rolled out the red carpet for Pope John Paul II yesterday. Nearly 45,000 people turned out to see him as he kicked off his 10th African tour. Almost a quarter of the people who live there are Roman Catholic.
Well, meteorologist John Harris joins us now with a look at our weather. And you have some good news and some sort of bad news. Yeah, bad news first, then the good news. <laughs> uh, today, Lisa, we've got a chance of some snow showers around the area, but tomorrow the sun starts to shine, and uh, looks like this weekend could be pretty nice. Let's take a look outside right now. It's of 12 o'clock. The skies are cloudy. We do have some snow showers off to the west. The barometric pressure is at 30.40 and falling. The humidity is up there at 64 percent. The dew point's at 27 degrees. That is allowing for the snowflakes out west. The temperature's at 38 degrees, and the winds are out of the north at 17 miles per hour. Stick around, and after the break, we'll check the forecast next. 1010 West 8. Our temperature here in Amarillo will start out just about normal this morning, quite cool, but for this time of the year in February, not too bad. Here in Amarillo, we were at 24 degrees, one degree above the normal. Now, the coldest readings came in from Canyon, uh, Plainview, Dimmit, and Portales, where we had a little bit of, uh, of uh, cloud break, so we had a little bit of radiational cooling. Anyway, you folks came in with 21 degrees. Now, the warmest reading came in in the eastern, southern part of the uh, Panhandle, where we had a little bit of cloud cover. Childress came in with 35 degrees. Memphis, 32. Shamrock came in in 30. And also, Dumas came in with 30 degrees. Now, if we take a look at the current temperatures, here in Amarillo, we're at 35 degrees, 39 degrees down uh, for you folks at Childress, 38 degrees up at Gage, and 34 degrees at Clayton. But uh, we do have an upper-level low, which is spinning through the area. This is the one we've been talking about for the last two weeks. It is rotating around from, uh, it is rotating clockwise, rather counterclockwise. And as we have little disturbances push off to the east, we'll have snow showers from time to time. In fact, we did have a snow shower around Tucumcari, which has pushed off into the Texas Panhandle, should be coming through the Amarillo area uh, before too much longer and give us a, a few flakes. But uh, we're not expecting a whole lot of snow from the snow accumulations. If we put the uh, south central uh, satellite into uh, motion, you can see the actual spin around the low. Now, we have most of the moisture off to the east, and this is where all of the rain shower and snow shower activity is going on. Anywhere from Corpus Christi up through uh, Punk City, Oklahoma, into Wichita, Kansas. But we do have a bit of a dry slot out to the west. And believe it or not, tomorrow, as this upper level low kicks off to the east, we will start to see sunshine around the area. But for today, this is where it's raining. We have a whole line of rain showers going on anywhere from Dallas, Waco, back up toward Ada, Oklahoma, and Oklahoma City, up toward Punk City, into Wichita, Kansas. All this activity is moving off to the northeast. We also have just a couple of areas down here that are indicating maybe a slight snow shower or maybe some freezing drizzle moving off to the north and east. Uh, and again, that will be moving through the panhandle. Well, most of the weather is occurring right over the top of us as this upper level low will start to kick off to the east. We do have a uh, Arctic cold front uh, coming in from the north. But right now, it looks like the cold air from it will start to push off to the east as high pressure builds off to our west. For today, then, and for the next 48 hours, this upper level low will kick down to the south. And then once it's over Boy City, will start to move off to the east. And as it moves off to the east, it will pull the moisture with it. And so tomorrow afternoon, we should see sunny skies. For today, then, currently outside, high pressure is building into the west, which will allow for the sunny skies. And here today in Amarillo, we do expect quite a bit of snow shower activity going on, mainly in the northeast part of the Panhandle. We expect a high of 37 degrees. And around the nation tomorrow, well, the sun will start to shine. We may see a snow flurry, say, in Beaver County or in the northeast part of the Texas Panhandle early tomorrow morning. But it should push out and closer at home here in Amarillo, where we expect a nice, comfortable high for February of about 45 degrees under partly cloudy skies. The forecast for today calls for cloudy and cold. Snow is likely across the area. The winds will be out of the east-northeast anywhere from 5 to 15. We do expect highs mainly in the 30s. And for tonight, then, we are looking for light snow showers, mainly in the eastern one-third of the panhandle, otherwise cloudy and cold. Here in Amarillo, we expect an overnight low of 26 degrees. And for the next five days, well, Friday, things start to improve. And then Saturday and Sunday, look at Sunday. We could be clear up to 60 degrees. And then we do have another cool front moving in on Monday, which will cloud the skies again. But for this time of year, once again, Lisa, not too bad. Oh, we like that. But we did expect this weather when the groundhog saw a shed. <laughs> so that's exactly right. <laughs> Thanks, John. Thank you, you John. Coming up next on News at Noon, catch all the day's top business and market news. With our own money man, Jeb Blunt. Hello, folks. I'm Trent Sizemore here at Jack Sizemore's Travel Ant. Topping our business news, analysts say Germany's independent central bank apparently has bowed to international pressure and lowered two key interest rates, the Lombard and the discount, which cuts the cost of borrowing. The idea is to perk up the sluggish German economy. 
The International Trade Commission says all three nations, Mexico, Canada, and the United States, will benefit from the North American Free Trade Agreement, but that Mexico will gain substantially more because its economy is so much smaller than the other two. Among the potential losers cited by the ITC are the automobile, apparel, flat glass and household appliance sectors. In other news, productivity of American workers, which is defined as output per number of hours work, shot up 2.7% in 1992, thanks to a healthy advance of 4% in the fourth quarter. The Labor Department says the annual increase was the biggest increase in two decades. Topping our financial news, stocks are mostly higher again today in heavy trading, extending yesterday's broad rally with encouragement from falling interest rates both here and abroad. Japan's central bank cut its discount rate overnight to 2.5%, and today German authorities also cut their key lending rates, a move that traders in world stock, bond, and currency markets have been anticipating. Analysts say these developments hold out for the promise of extra help for the recovering US, U.S. economy and overseas economies still struggling to get out of recessions. The most active issues on the big board include Chrysler Corporation, General Motors, Waste Management, Glaxo, Ford Motor, Citicor, Merck, Corning, Gap, and Motorola. Advancing lead declining issues almost 2 to 1 in the Dow Industrials are up. 18 points. Moving on to the commodities, the trade is light to moderate with sales fully steady at the 79 to 79 and a half dollar area. The beef cutouts are down 10 cents to 27 cents on 142 loads of cuts and 46 loads of trimmings. The live cattle futures opened firmer but quickly dropped into negative ground and are showing slight losses at midday. Local and commercial related selling has pressured the market although pit activity has been fairly light. Moving on to the grains, the grains did not get the sustained bounce that many had hoped would come from Secretary Espy's comments. The large government payments over the next 60 days may reduce the need to sell grain for cash flow purposes. If we have any renewed selling in the grain prices, that might spur further government action on the Russian situation. The USDA has stated that they are considering four or five alternatives, but they still don't have any plans on the fast track to move more grain into Russia. It'll be interesting to see what they do come up with. Yes, it will. Thank you, right, Jeff. Yeah, thanks. You're welcome. And finally today, anyone who's ever gone through a divorce knows it can be rough. But now there's a New Mexico company dedicated to making splitting up a little easier. Stay with us. Listen, this is what it sounds like when sight is restored to a diabetic patient who is legally blind. Watch. This is laser surgery. No incisions, no need for anesthesia. Come, meet Dr. Beverly Clark, Amarillo's leading retina specialist. We can prevent diabetics losing vision in most cases, but early recognition is vital. Even if you haven't read a newspaper in years, look and really see again. A chiropractic clinic. Finally today, weddings are a time to celebrate. Two people fall in love and plan to spend the rest of their lives together. Things don't always work out like we plan, and sometimes you find yourself in divorce court. Bill Wood has a story of some Albuquerque folks who've decided to celebrate their newfound freedom. Henry, and taking this woman whose hand you hold to be your wife. It's the old-fashioned marriage made in heaven with a not-so-familiar ring. With this ring, it's your love for each other. The hopes of Henry and Phyllis are for a long-lasting life together. If so, say I do. A ceremony sealed with circles of gold. A relationship to be divided only by death. We're gathered here today to celebrate the new life of Jean Jordan. Unless it's divided by divorce. Jean is hereby released, renewed, and freed. Jean Jordan was married for 19 years, 7 months, and 4 days. To have and to hold anyone you damn well please. Her millionaire movie producer husband left her for his 21-year-old secretary. Now, place the ring on the anvil. All that's left of the relationship is the ring. Bashing this circle will bring you full circle. Now take the hammer. Since she never wore it, she smashed it to smithereens. Oh, yes, and that's for the mother. No, that's, for the... that's it right there. That's the end of it. The name of this New Mexico business is Freedom Rings, created by the Albuquerque woman who created all these logos. It was an idea she had after her own divorce. Here we go. Yeah. Congratulations to Freedom. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Freedom. Thank you. Yes, yes. Before Freedom Rang, there was hardly any such thing as a divorce <laughs> celebration. <laughs> to the ring. When you get divorced, you just sign the paper and that's it. And a lot of people stand there like I did and say, is that it? 
Weddings were so frilly and fancy, but divorces were downright dull. Until people started smashing and letting Lynn Peters remake their old marriage jewelry into something new. One of our latest clients uh, is having a uh, golf marker made out of his. You just kind of close the last page in the book, so to speak. Final chapter. But, no, I feel a chapter better, better than the ones before. You know, you got to get on with life. And... Bill Wood for CBS News, Albuquerque. And that's our news for this Thursday. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Bye-bye. Experience KFDA News.